I want to show you some real world data. This data set is about county health rankings. It's real world in that it is drawn from actual counties in Missouri. However, these counties have been de-identified so that you do not know which county is which. And the name of the county isn't really important. What is important are the variables. You will notice that these county health rankings come in many forms, like raw numbers, the count of the number of people in a rural setting in that county, or the number of dollars representing a median household income, or percentages, such as the percent of adults with obesity in that county, or ratios, such as income ratio, rates per 100,000, such as deaths from all cancers per 100,000 citizens in that county, or averages, such as the average number of physically unhealthy days. All of these county health ranking data points tell us something important that might allow us to compare between counties or within counties. But here is the point that I want to make with this lecture. Given this data set, how would you compare these values? How can you compare raw numbers to percentages, to rates per 100,000, to ratios or averages? And the answer is that we are going to convert all of these disparate measures into a comparable format called a z-score distribution. Mathematically speaking, a z-score describes how far a raw score falls from the mean in standard deviation units. Well, that makes sense, right? Nothing more to explain there. Okay, I'll try. So clearly there are three things that we need to know. The raw score, the mean, and the standard deviation. How far a raw score falls from the mean is subtraction. So we'll take the raw score minus the mean. In standard deviation units, which implies division. And so we will divide the difference by the standard deviation. That is what gives us a z-score. Now it makes perfect sense, right? Okay, I can do better. Z-scores will allow us to compare scales that have been measured on raw numbers versus percentages versus rates per 100,000 because any of those scales could be used to compute a mean followed by us taking any particular raw score, which would be the data point for that particular county, and then dividing it by the standard deviation of all of those data. Then we would know the relative location of every data point within that data set. This is called standardization. If you've ever heard of standardized testing, that simply means that scores have been divided by some measure of variability, like the standard deviation. We're going to use z-scores for making comparisons. Let me illustrate what a z-score will look like so you'll recognize it when you see one. These are z-scores. And you'll notice they all have something in common. They all begin with Z. And they also have a sign, either positive or negative. And they have numbers that have been presented to us as a number, a decimal, and two trailing numbers. That is how we are going to structure our Z-scores. Every Z-score has a sign, and that sign tells whether the score is above or below the mean. Now, there are very few always and nevers in statistics, but this is one of them. A positive z-score is always above the mean, and a negative z-score is always below the mean. Look at the sign to tell which side of the mean this z-score is on. Z-scores 
also have a number that tells the distance between that score and the mean in terms of standard deviation. If you had a score that was at the mean, what would be its difference from the mean? Well, if that score is the same as the mean, the difference is zero. And when we divide it by the standard deviation, we would get zero. Therefore, the mean of a standard normal distribution is zero. And we're going to learn that the standard deviation is one. And that's going to be important for interpreting our z-scores. I've told you before that sometimes I like to show you how to do something wrong as a way of illustrating how to do it right. Let's do that with z-scores. There are three qualities that we should see with our z-scores. The first is that it has a sign, positive or negative, and it has a number that has been rounded to two decimal places. If that number is less than one, we would still include the leading zero. Let's take a look at three examples where the z-scores have been done wrong, and you tell me what is the mistake. In this first example, what's been left out? They didn't include the positive sign. How about the second example? Well, here, they didn't include the leading zero. And how about this third example? They didn't round the z-score to two decimals. A z-score tells us how far a raw score falls from the mean in standard deviation units. Let's see what that looks like mathematically. This is a z-score formula. z equals x, which is our raw score, minus the mean of all of the scores for that variable, divided by the standard deviation of that variable. Now that we know what a z-score is, let's look at how it can be used and interpreted.